have enough socks for three weeks. You don't have enough anything for three weeks. <laughs> including a girl with three weeks of patience. Honey, I thought it was only going to be for one week. I was beautifully braced for one week. That's what my editor said, one week in California. Yeah, and as soon as you agree to one week, your editor tricks you into agreeing to three weeks. <laughs> Honey, this is not a Pat O'Brien movie. <laughs> What's a Pat O'Brien movie? <clears throat> uh, never mind. My editor doesn't have to trick me. All he has to say is, Hollinger, you go to California for three weeks instead of one week. Then you go. I do, and gratefully, because it's a major assignment. Violence in television and movies. I mean, an important subject like that can't be researched in two minutes. There are, well, there are a lot of different violent viewpoints on violence. Mine included. <laughs> I am violently opposed to your taking this entire trip. I mean, what if you get out there and your editor changes his mind again? I mean, you could say he wants you out there for four weeks or months or for a year. <laughs> then what'll you do? Go barefoot. <laughs> honey, honey, I was only trying to make you laugh. Sorry. Ho, ho, ha, ha. What shirt do you want to take, the beige one or the blue one? Well, does one have an advantage over the other? Well, the blue one has a worn collar but buttons on both sleeves, and the beige one has a fair collar and no buttons at all. Well, maybe I ought to buy some new ones before I go. Well, what difference does it make, the way they dress out in California? I hear they wear absolutely nothing at all. Really? Yeah, and the women go shopping in bikinis. On second thought, I'll wait and do my shopping out there. <laughs> what are you doing? Trying to laugh again. Oh, honey, come on. Don't you think it's going to be as tough for me as it is for you? It's never as difficult for those who go as it is for those who remain behind. If I didn't think you could hang in there for a while while I'm gone, well, I'd, I'd have given up the assignment. Well, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best hanger in there you ever saw. Hangers in there. That's what I said. Uh, no, no, you put the plural in the wrong place, like mother-in-laws. It's mothers-in-law. Terrific. I stand criticized and defeated. <laughs> if there's nothing else you have for me to do, I'll be on my merry way. Okay, I'll pick you up for dinner at seven. If it strikes your fancy. It does so strike. You know, Donald, you might not have noticed, but I've changed a great deal since I've been on my own in New York. I've matured and, and ripened, much the same as one of your great French cheeses. And I'm proud of you. My soggy days are over. I'm an adult now, in complete control of my emotions. I'm able to adjust and, and to function and, and sway with the wind and live happily ever after. Well, not ever after, just for three weeks. <laughs> Whatever. One thing I've always wanted is that for our friends to say Donald Hollinger doesn't have to worry about that girl. just been struck with a fantastically brilliant solution to the whole problem. What is it? Come with me. Come with you? Right. T to California? How about that, brilliant? 
Oh, no, I can't do that. Can I? Oh, why not? No, I, I mean, I just can't. Why not? Well, let me think. Well, money, for one thing. No problem. The magazine bought me a first-class airline ticket, which I'll change for two coach seats. They're paying for a double room in the hotel, which I'll switch to two singles. Well, honey, what could be simpler? Well, for another thing, people. What about people? What'll they say? That's what about people. Honey, who's gonna pay any attention to us? Well, my father, for one. He'll pay attention. And when you've got my father paying attention, you don't need anybody else. Well, what about the last time you went to California? Oh, well, that was different. That was a job. Well, so is this. You can work for me. Well, what would I do? Make my trip pleasant. Oh, Donald. You can't pay me for making your trip pleasant. Why not? You can have a piece of my per diem. Just what does that mean? <laughs> it means I'm getting $25 a day for expenses. That's $12.50 a piece. We could do pretty good on that. $25 for three weeks, 21 days, uh, divided by two, that's, um... You can live on $262.50 for three weeks, can't you? Oh, of course I can. Well, honey, what's the problem? Donald, as a boyfriend, my father's not exactly tickled to death with you. How do I tell him we're taking a trip together and you're paying me by the day? <laughs> if you're going to look at it from his point of view. Can't you come up with another fantastically brilliant idea? Well, how about your agents? Can't they get you a job out there? My agent? Get me a job? Hey, Donald, that's not as silly as it sounds. I mean, they might not be able to get me a job right away, but they might be able to get me an interview. Like, like for a little part. And who's to say a little part might not lead to a bigger part? And if the public likes me, well, from then on, it's pick and choose. It's happened before. Now, there's an excuse I can live with. I'm perfectly willing to invest $260 in a future pregnant with possibilities. Yeah. Uh, Donald, uh, try not to phrase it that way when you're explaining it to Daddy. <laughs> Oops. Thank you. Now, with uh, those conditions, I'm perfectly willing to accept your financial support. Good. Now, we have to make it all legal, like with a bank. And that's not necessary. Yes, it is. Now, I want to make monthly payments with interest. Honey. And, and a demand note. That way, anytime you want your money back, you can have it. Now, uh, what should the interest be? How about 20%? 20%? That's outrageous. I read somewhere that four and three quarters is the going rate. I'll give you five. Honey, this is ridiculous. Now, I'll make four monthly installments, and I'll give you the first installment next month. I'll tear up the note. <laughs> Oh, Donald, please. I mean, as, as much as I want to go, not only to be with you, but, but for the sake of my career, well, I just have to feel that, that meeting my obligations is something that I'm capable of. And that way, when I am a big success, well, I won't feel that it was gratuitous. I'll, I'll feel that it was earned. Don't you understand? Suppose you're not a star in four months and you can't make payments, then what? Then you can tear up the note. <laughs> girl who had a burning desire to live in New York City. You're certainly not spending much time here. I thought we settled that on the phone last night. We did. You've heard my last words on the subject. Fathers are not to reason why. Fathers are to do or die. Oh, oh, it's not me I'm worried about. I can take it. It's your mother. What this is doing to her is an entirely different thing. It's not doing anything to her. I called her and told her straight out that I was going to California with Donald. What did she say? She said, have a good trip, and then she went to the hairdresser. You're kidding. No, I'm not. You've driven her insane. I did not. Mother just understands that this is all part of my career. I mean, New York is a theater city, and Hollywood is a, is a motion picture city, and Mother understands that motion pictures are every bit as important to my career as a theater. Oh, sex, sex, sex. <laughs> sex? Don't look so innocent. You know what it is. Of course I know what it is. I just don't remember bringing it up. Broadway, Hollywood. It's even crept into the schoolroom. What are you talking about? They're teaching kids what the birds and bees do before they know what a bird or a bee is. Hi, honey. Speak of the devil. Hi. How are you, Mr. Murray? Whatever happened to knocking? Well, the, the door was open. Daddy was just giving me a lecture on sex education. Why would you need a lecture on sex? <laughs> uh, 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 what, I, what I meant was... Um, uh, Anne certainly knows all there is to know about sex. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Uh, I meant, uh, well, you can never learn too much about sex. 
Listen, here's your airline ticket and $50. Thank you, Donald. What's the $50 for? Oh, uh, nothing in particular. Don't get smart with me. Daddy, I applied to Donald for a loan. What did you put up for collateral? Nothing, Donald, trust me. That's marvelous. At least his mother will sleep tonight. Uh, Mr. Marie, it's just that Anne didn't have enough money to make the trip, so I figured the least I could do was loan it to her so she could have the opportunity she so richly deserves. <laughs> Bravo. And so I, I gave him a note, all legal and bank-like. That's right, and here it is. Daddy, what are you doing? If you needed money, why didn't you come to the one person who would have given it to you without any strings attached? Well, that's what I did. I'm talking about me. I would have loaned you the money. Oh, oh, well, fine. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the, the note for the money and the interest. You charged her interest? About five percent. That's shameful. I'll give it to you for four and a half. Blood will tell. But only to give you a sense of responsibility. Now, if I could only figure out a way to give you one. Oh, Daddy, Donald has a great sense of responsibility. I mean, it's ridiculous how responsible he is. I'll buy that. So from now on, I'm holding you responsible for anything and everything that happens. Bon voyage. Daddy just can't stand tearful goodbyes. Duffy, enjoy your stay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Follow me. Oh, thank you, Dan. The fire. Uh, I'm Donald Hollinger. Oh, yes, yes. We've been expecting you and Mrs. Hollinger. <laughs> well, I, I, oh. I, no, no. This isn't Mrs. Hollinger. No, no. My name is Marie. M-A-R-I-E. Anne-Marie. Miss Anne-Marie. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll just sign the register, Mr. Hollinger, we have a nice double room set aside. Wait a minute. There seems to be some misunderstanding. Doesn't there seem to be, Donald? Misunderstanding? Well, yes. You see, we asked for two single rooms. Uh, uh, yes, you see, the original, the original reservation called for one double room. Well, the original reservation has nothing to do with it, does it, Donald? You told me that you wired ahead and changed his reservation. Yeah, I did. I sent a telegram to the hotel. Well, I'm you sorry, Miss Marie, to but you see, these are all well, confirmed. They come over telegram. Change the no reservation. You're supposed to wire them the hold, hold it. Hold, 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 hold. Are you sure you didn't get a request for a change? Apparently not, Mr. Hollinger. However, if you wish. Well, yes, thank you. We, we do wish. Well, separate rooms. Well, now, that shouldn't be too hard to manage. Let's see. We could have sent separate wires requesting separate rooms, but as we were arriving at the same time at the same place, well, it just didn't seem necessary. Well, I, I understand. Well, we should have this all straightened out in just a minute. Now, let me see here. Oh, yes, yes, here we are. I can put Miss Marie on the sixth floor and you, Mr. Hollinger, on the second floor. How will that be? Well, I don't think we have to go that far. <laughs> You see, the only reason I'm here is that, well, Donald got this assignment from his magazine, and although I could have just as easily stayed on Broadway, I thought, well, I might come out to California and look into motion pictures. Would you like two rooms on the same floor? Say the second or the sixth? Well, it, it makes no difference to me. Well, it makes no difference to me either. <laughs> me either. Why don't you decide? Say two rooms on the second floor? Fine. 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 
I'm an actress. <laughs> Which room you want your bags in? Will put his bags in his room and my bags in my room. <laughs> uh, right, put my bags in 205 and Miss Marie's in 203. Yes, sir. <laughs> New York, we live 12 blocks apart. <laughs> Who is it? The house detective. Do you have a man in your room? No, I don't, but I appreciate the offer. Hi. Hi. How's your room? That's fine. How's yours? It's much larger than this. Oh, it is. Cross ventilation, three closets, king size bed, dressing room with a full length mirror and special makeup lights. Oh, I see what it is. This room is your garage. <laughs> well, honey, listen, you'll be much happier next door. Let's switch rooms. Oh, I'm just kidding. No bother. It's no bother. It's just a question of changing bags. Well, if you really don't mind. Actually, you're doing me a favor. I feel a little strange with special makeup lights. <laughs> The lights in Donald's bathroom has a special kind of a glow, so he, he suggested that we switch rooms. Well, I mean, right off, I said no, but then Donald insisted. So uh, it was just a matter of switching bags. But I don't want to bother you with it. So, um, well, uh, from now on, Mr. Hollinger will be in 203, and I'll be in 205. Thank you. I didn't do anything. Oh, you're a good listener. <laughs> Hello. Who is this? Donald Hollinger. What are you doing in my daughter's room? Oh, hello, Mr. Marie. How are you? Never mind the niceties. Answer my question. <laughs> well, to begin with, this is not your daughter's room. Well, when I asked for Anne, this is the room they connected me with. You, well, they made a mistake, Mr. Marie. Just a second. Operator. Operator. Were you signaling? Yes, will you please give this call to Miss Anne Marie in room 205? I'm sorry, Miss Anne Marie is in 203. <laughs> no, she's not. When will she be back, sir? Well, she was in this room, operator, but she's not now, and she's not coming back to this room. Ever. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir, but she's checked out. Well, where did she go? Operator, she didn't go anywhere. I just told you Miss Anne Marie is still in the hotel. Operator, I want to speak to my daughter, Miss Anne Marie. Now, what room is she in? Miss Anne Marie is registered in room 203, sir. I have no way of knowing what room she's in. Operator, I told you she's in room 205. I'd like to speak to somebody with authority. I'll transfer your call to the police department. None of your sarcasm, madam. Uh, operator. Operator, will you just please transfer this call to room 205? Uh, room service, please. Who is it? The maid. May I? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Aren't you two together? Uh, no. No, we're not. You want me to close it? <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. Mrs. Hollinger? I am not Mrs. Hollinger. I am Miss Anne Marie. Mr. Hollinger is in room 203. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hollinger? Oh, would you take that down to room 205? 
I did, but the lady said it didn't belong there. Well, that's because I didn't tell her we were going to have dinner at the hotel. I wanted to surprise her. Take it back down to her room. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Hollinger said to tell you that you're having dinner in the hotel and to bring this back to your room. Would you kindly tell Mr. Hollinger that I would certainly enjoy having dinner in the hotel, but I would prefer it not be in this room. Thank you. I told you to take it next door. Never mind what you told me. The lady told me she wants the dinner served in here. But that's silly. Her room is a much bigger room. You got a point. Did you tell her that? Not me. I got trouble enough keeping this stuff hot. <laughs> just, just a minute. Honey, it doesn't make any sense to have dinner in my room. We'd be so much more comfortable in here. Oh, Donald, what will this look like to the waiter? Well, what would it look like if you had dinner in my room? I never thought of that. You folks decided yet? We're working it out. You see, the problem is, we're really not traveling together. You see, I'm really an actress, and, well, rather than spend a life on the Broadway stage, I decided to come to Hollywood and take my chances here. And then Donald got this assignment that brought him to Hollywood, and so purely as a matter of expediency, we decided to just split the fare. And then, of course, he had this double room in the airplane and what have you. We could trade in for two single rooms and two tickets. So right off... How's your steak? Oh, it's marvelous. How's yours? Delicious. But you know, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Why? I don't think it's so ridiculous. Of course it is. I can't walk around the table, pull out your chair for you, pour your wine, or, or even nibble on your air a little bit. So nibble your celery. You know how I feel about lying, Don. What has lying got to do with it? Well, if my father calls again and wants to know where we had dinner tonight, I can truthfully say... I had dinner in my room, and you had dinner in yours. Good morning, Good sir. Good morning. I don't know if you remember me or not, but I checked in last night. Anne-Marie, Miss Anne-Marie, in 205, uh, formerly of 203. Uh, yes, I remember, Miss Marie. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, uh, is it possible for me to leave a message for Mr. Hollinger? Of course. You see, he went out on an early meeting with the producer, and if he gets back before I do, he won't know where I've gone. <laughs> certainly, Miss, certainly. Oh. The message? Oh, thank you. Uh, just tell him that I had to go to Paramount Studios. Because I got a call from my agents, Gilliam and Norris. Paramount Studios? Yes, Gilliam and Norris. Mm. Uh, that's G-I-L-L-I-A-M and Norris. It got me an interview with the casting director of Paramount, a Mr. Wagner, W-A-G-N-E-R, who's looking for fresh new faces. Of course, my agent... <laughs> w? A G. <laughs> right. So, my agents thought this is the perfect opportunity for me because they're looking for fresh new faces, and since I'm from New York, this could be the perfect opportunity for me. You see, I'm an actress. <laughs> you see, I am an actress. <laughs> 